If you have one glute that doesn't seem to work or activate quite as well as the other one, or potentially it's even smaller than the other one, this video is for you. Now I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Everyone has asymmetrical glutes. The question is just to what extent? I'm gonna get into the two most common reasons why people present with asymmetrical glutes and exactly what you can do to start to correct it immediately. Now, when we have an asymmetrical ability to use and or develop our glutes, there is going to be an asymmetry within the pelvis itself. We're going to present with some sort of pelvis that's facing one direction more so than the other. And also a backside of the pelvis that's more closed off on one side and open on the other. Now let's first talk about what the glutes do because that's going to be extremely important for understanding how our pelvis can limit their ability to work. The glutes primarily attach on the sacrum and they wrap around our pelvis and attach on the femur right here. When they contract, they do several different things. They can create extension of our hip like that and they can also create external rotation of our hips like that. So they can basically pull those attachment sites closer together, which closes off this space on the backside of the pelvis. Therefore, in order to stretch the glute fibers, we need to have more opening on the backside of the pelvis, and we need to move into more internal rotation and usually hip flexion. Now there's two main reasons why we could have an asymmetrical ability to use or develop our glutes. The first would be that the pelvis and the sacrum, this bone right here, is facing towards one side and that is creating an opening of space on one side and a closing of that back space on the other. Let's say, for example, my pelvis was turned towards the right side. What that would do is rotate this bone in, flare this bone out, and the sacrum would be facing the right side. This would be an internally rotated position of my right side, more of an externally rotated position of my left side. Now I'm exaggerating how much movement is happening at this pelvis here. It's just so you can understand it, but understand that these are a lot more micro movements. If this is you, commonly what you're going to see is that underdeveloped glute or weaker glute on that side, but also better hip internal rotation and a better straight leg raise on this side. What we would want to do is educate our body to better use our glutes and be able to close this space off on the back and get the pelvis to turn better towards the other side. The way I like to do that is to create context for when the glute needs to fire. In the gait cycle or when we're running or just pushing off in general, we have our glutes start to really work and contract when our foot arch is flat on the ground in a position of what we would call pronation. This flattening of the foot arch cues our glute to fire and push us forward. So we wanna teach our brain, hey, when my foot arch is on the ground, I want my glute max to contract and push me to the other side. This is one really great exercise for doing exactly that. We're going to have a yoga block or just something, a couple of books could work stacked underneath the feet. That's gonna allow us to best get the foot contacts we need for this exercise. We have a 90 degree bend at both our knees and our hips. So a right angle at both. And we have a very, very light band around the top of the knees. You don't wanna use a heavy band. It will not help you. You want something that's pretty light or very light according to the band resistance. And we also have a towel roll underneath the side that's facing the ground. So this will be his left side in this instance right here. And the towel roll is not underneath the hip, but underneath the waist, the lowest ribs right there. And some sort of pillow that will allow you to keep your head nice and neutral and isn't side running you to one side or the other or shoving your head forward or backward. So everything is in line right here. So to initiate this exercise, we need to first get our rib cage in a good position. So Jacob's just gonna take a nice full exhale through his mouth. <sighs> Sigh the air out for about five seconds. He's gonna feel his rib cage come down. Good. Now, he wants to feel the foot contacts on the wall of his right first metatarsal head and inner heel. That's going to allow him to connect his glute working with his foot. And we want to make sure we're genuinely using our glutes. So the way that we do that is maintaining that ribs down position. He's going to reach this top hip for the wall away from him. So that's almost going to elongate the top side of him right here and crunch the bottom side out. It's almost like he's doing a little side crunch to that bottom side there. So he should feel that without flaring his rib cage, of course. Okay, so to recap so far, we've got the foot contacts on the right side. Left foot is also flat. We have the ribs down and we have this hip reaching for the wall. He's going to slide his right knee ahead of his left knee or the top knee ahead of 
the bottom knee without ever losing that inner heel or first met head contact. And then he's gonna slightly raise his knee towards the ceiling without ever losing those right foot contacts. So he never wants to roll to the outside of his foot. He wants to make sure that he's maintaining those. So if that's as high as you can get, that's totally cool. You just wanna make sure you're going forward first and then up. And if you do it right, you should feel your lower butt cheek on this side, this top side here working really well. So Jacob is going to breathe in through his nose, out through his mouth, nice and relaxed. Check in with yourself. Is your neck activated? Is your low back activated? If it is, relax, because all you wanna feel is this lower right glute working, this lower glute on the top side working, and maybe some downside side abs right there. So that'd be his left side abs. By far the biggest mistake here is people are going to want to use their top side ab wall to help them lift that knee up. So they're gonna crunch here to get that. The reason why we have this reaching away is so that way we don't do that. So it's important that we keep our rib cage down, but we still have this intention to reach away. It may help you to take this side, this downside elbow, and push it into the floor to help you get a little bit of those downside side ups, but ultimately just keep the intention to keep all this relaxed in this ab wall while reaching this towards the wall. And that'll allow you to still feel that glute working really well. The other common mistake we see is the setup. So people will start too far away like this, and now they're kind of sliding their leg like this, and it, it just doesn't work at all. So we wanna make sure that we're forward folded enough. We wanna have at least a 90 degree angle right here. If not, maybe just a tiny bit less than that to optimize our ability to push our foot arch into the wall and use it with our glute. And finally, the last thing to keep in mind is just don't extend your low back. Don't let your ribs flare at all. If you're maintaining the intention to keep your rib cage down, then you'll optimize your ability to use your glute max during this. So to recap, what we have is a little bit of left side abs, lower glute max on the top side, and we have our rib cage down. The rest of our body, our neck, our low back, our left foot is still on the wall, but relaxed. If you like this type of approach, check out my beginner body restoration program. It's very simple, yet it respects the nuance of how asymmetries can drive dysfunction and poor recruitment of muscles. So if you wanna create more symmetry within your movement and your posture, and also improve issues like this, check out the link down below in the description. The second scenario is, let's say you had a smaller or weaker glute on the side that was actually more closed off in the back. So again, let's use that example of the pelvis that's turned to the right side, but the space on the left is more closed off, and we had that weaker or smaller glute on the left side. In this case, what's happening is that we can't get opening of the back side of the pelvis on that side. We can't access internal rotation on that side. So we can't get a meaningful stretch on that glute. One key component of muscle activation and hypertrophy or muscle building is that muscles need to be able to come from a relatively elongated position to fully contract. How am I going to grow my bicep if I'm just going to be doing this all day long? I need some degree of range of motion for me to properly and fully use that muscle. So similar principle here. We need to be able to create some opening and some space here. You'll know this is you if you have better hip flexion, external rotation, and also hip abduction on this side, yet this glute appears to be weaker. What we would want to do is educate our body to open up that space and stretch out that glute in a meaningful way because usually what's happening here is that we are going to be pushed forward on that side. The glute is in a contracted position, assisting us in keeping that side more forward. So we want to shift the hips back on that side, open up the space on the back side of the pelvis and improve our internal rotation capability. We're gonna start with one foot on the book, the side we're gonna stretch out. And that book is about two inches thick. I wouldn't go much more than that. And we have a pull in the opposite side hand, the right hand for stabilization. But first, start in the neutral stance and then get your right foot or the opposite side foot. The heel of that foot is going to be in line with the toes of the side you're gonna stretch out, so that'd be the left side. And now you're gonna slightly bend both knees, okay? Do a little posterior pelvic tilt. So if your pelvis was a bowl of water, you don't want it spilling out the front, you want it spilling out the back just a little bit. And now what you want to do is get heavy on your back heel, your left heel. And keeping your hand on this hip, just push your hips back and off to the side on that side. And you should feel a little stretch in the back of your left hip. Not like a muscular stretch as much as it is a bony sort of stretch. It's kind of hard to describe, but you'll know what I mean when you get it right here in this lower butt cheek. 
You can take that other side arm with the pole, reach it forward, and then you can just really sink into it. It's gonna depend on the individual how deep you get into this stretch. For some people, where Trevor is, is going to be enough. For other people, they need to get into it a little bit more and push those hips back like that. The goal is though, is just to get to the most shallow point where you feel that hip capsule stretch and then just hang out there for breaths, focusing on that back heel without losing the front of your foot and toes curling up. Keep the whole foot flat, but the heel is where you're focusing your weight. Now the biggest problem we're gonna see on this exercise is people are going to, yes, be on that back heel, but their hips are gonna to twist to the other direction like that. So what's really key here is that we get the pelvic tilt first and then we shift over to that side. So the hips are going back and over to that side. Do you see how his outside hip is outside of his knee on that side? That's the goal. So that will allow you to feel a stretch right in there, which is where you should feel it. The other common mistake is people are gonna turn this into more of a squat and get too deep into it rather than more of a hinge. So they're gonna do this and that's too much knee bend. So get a little bit of knee bend, but focus more on the hips going back a little bit. Right there is generally where we wanna be. The only other thing to keep in mind is don't overreach it and try to do a maximal stretch. It's just like, can you get like a five out of 10 stretch there and hang out? That's all you need. More is not better here. Don't feel any weird stuff in your traps or your shoulders. Just a gentle reach, sit back into that hip and stay there for a couple of minutes. Now, regardless of which exercise you pick or you need, I would recommend doing about three sets of five to six very slow and controlled breath cycles. The breathing component is key because we're trying to relax things and create context for our movement. And our body can only do that best when it feels safe and relaxed. So make sure that that breathing is on point and that you're not tensing things up excessively. If this is making sense to you, it would mean a lot to me and the channel if you could do me a favor and smash that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already.